Hello, everybody. Welcome to When Winter Ends. Um, I was browsing on itch.io the other day and found this game uh, to sort of continue our little wintry game theme that we sort of have going on. Um, it's a visual novel style game where you're uh, somebody who gets caught in a like, snowstorm, I think, and you take shelter in this uh, abandoned house, but maybe the house isn't so abandoned, actually? Uh, and that's all I know after that, but I really thought that the- oh, sudden sound. I really thought that the, um, the art style especially looked really cool, so I kind of wanted to take a look at this. So, are you far from home? Am I far from home? I'm gonna say yes. You find yourself inside an old abandoned building. You slam the door behind you, locking out the raging storm outside. Well, not quite. A little bit of the cold trickles from the collapsed roof above you. But it was better than being out in a blizzard. You slump down by the door, relieved to have found shelter. It takes you a while to adjust to the darkness. But when you do, lock looked around in the, at this old decrepit house you looked around in this old decrepit house oh hi um hello a couple of paintings they're old and water damaged you can only see bits and pieces of fabric and skin it seems to be an old family painting right uh a poorly made we're gonna <laughs> avoid the obvious <laughs> the obvious thing right now <laughs> poorly made wreath dried but seems quite new making a wreath is easier said than done a couple of books you can no longer read what's inside but judging by what's left of the pictures they seem to be children's books okay okay paintings again fireplace Small sofas, you wonder if you can light a fire in there. It's too cold to collect firewood though, but perhaps some old earthenwares. Whatever was inside is long gone. All that's left is some mold and spider webs. What about this guy? I like this guy. Oh you can't really see him, but it's a like cute little teddy bear. A couple of toys and children's books. A bittersweet feeling fills your chest looking at them. Okay, how about this? How about this? <laughs> uh See someone by the stairs, their gaze fixated at you. You feel anxious. <laughs> you begin to consider your options, but it is currently impossible to leave with the storm outside. Looking at you, the shadow stopped in its tracks. Oh! Oh, you're just a cute girl! Aww. Hi! Uh, are you okay? A sweet and quiet voice was heard from the shadow. You calmed down a bit. Oh, oh uh, yes. Sorry, you spooked me for a bit there. Didn't think anyone is still living here. Sorry. If it's alright with you, can I stay here for a little while? Ah, right. You wouldn't be able to survive a storm like this if you stayed outside. You can stay. I guess. Just don't make a mess. You looked at the small figure before you. A child, no more than fifteen, perhaps. Several questions began happening in your mind as you looked at her. Uh, where are your parents? <laughs> um, would it be better for me to ask your parents for permission first? I feel a little bad <laughs> crashing in on an ounce like this. There's only me. Huh? Where are your parents? Oh, they left. What do you mean, they left? They left a child like you behind? Were you abandoned? I don't think it was intentional. And I'm big enough to manage on my own. Are you really? You sighed, finding it absolutely ridiculous that they've left such a young child in this dilapidated house all by herself. But when was the last time you saw them? I don't know. It's been a while. Why don't you come with me and we'll go look for them together? Maybe they'll be in the village nearby. No, I don't think so. I think it's better if I stay here. But... 
Oh, jeez. Um, you can always come back. Even if you leave to sh uh, seek shelter elsewhere, it's not like you can't come back here. The house won't suddenly grow a pair of legs and run off. It's not going to go anywhere. When we reach the village, we might be able to get someone to help repair it. What do you think? The child thinks for a moment. That makes sense. But it won't be the same house anymore. Well, I'm pretty sure it was already a very different house compared to how it was back then, don't you think so? Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Why don't you do the talking? What are you even doing here? Um, I'm- ooh. I'm just traveling. Why are you traveling? Is there something you're looking for? I want to see the world. I wanted to see the world, I guess. I wanted to experience what the world has to offer. Hearing birds singing, meeting new people, experiencing new things. You get the gist. But what is there to see out there? Isn't it lonely being out there on your own? Uh, not really. I get to meet lots of people and see a lot of things. Some wonderful, while others not so much. But there's enough wonder in this world to fill my heart with excitement. I see. Yeah. The two of you stayed silent for a few moments before you broke it. Hey, it's pretty cold in here, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, it is. Do you, by any chance, have some firewood or something? Oh, I think we used to keep it in a shed outside. <laughs> I don't think we can go outside like this. Is it really that cold to you? I have some spare blankets upstairs. A and, um... I don't mind if you make a fire with anything you find here. Are you sure? Yes, it's okay. I thought about it, and you're right. This place is cold. It has seen better days. And now there's no one left here but the two of us. I can't fix any of the broken things in this house myself. So I think it'll be okay. Alright. As the child scurries upstairs to grab the blankets for you, you take some time to scan the area for items you could use to light a fire. You decide to search for firewood in... What's left of the kitchen? Oh. Wow. Uh, about this, the frame of this picture? You feel bad using this thing as firewood. You take apart the painting and break the frame into pieces for kindling. You set aside the canvas for them to keep. Hmm. Examine the sofas. It's too difficult to take apart the sofas themselves. You find them stuffed with straw and core. What's that? It would make a fine tinder to start the fire. Having collected some tinder, as well as some kindling, you rummage through your belongings to grab some matches. Having collected all necessary items to start, a f to start a fire, you crouch by the fireplace. Just as you light the match, you hear the child scurrying downstairs, carrying a bundle of large blankets that seem to envelop her. She stands behind you, uh, peering over your shoulders as you light the tinder and toss it into the fireplace. Wow, uh, how did you do that? That was just like magic. You chuckle at her reaction. It's called a safety match. You see these little sticks inside the box. If you scratch them against this part of the box, it'll create a small fire. I see. That's amazing. It usually takes Mama several attempts to get a fire going. This reminds me of when everyone was still around. We'd sit around the fire like this after a wonderful meal, and I'd fall asleep on the armchair. I've been trying to celeb uh, celebrate as we did. I even tried to make a wreath. No one ever taught me how to light a fire, though. That's to be expected. They're probably worried you'd get hurt. Ah, uh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. I think my brother told me when I was younger. I had once tried to eat the flames of a candle. To be honest, I don't remember anything like that. But then again, I don't remember many things from that time. I can't blame my, my younger self, though. The fire looked so warm and so pretty. 
I agree. I actually have two candles burning here. <laughs> I, I'm definitely a fire enjoyer. <laughs> she stares, enamored at the crackling fire pit. You watch her stare, starry-eyed at the dancing flames. I decided to ask her. Mm. Yeah, do you... No. Uh, how did you stay warm all this time? Did you just bury yourself in blankets? Mm, well, I don't really feel cold, but if I do, I would use the blankets. Oh, I'd almost forgotten. I'm not sure which blanket you wanted, so I brought a few. <laughs> She's really cute. What do you mean you don't get cold? In her arms are two different blankets. The first is a knitted blanket made of thick wool. You could tell it was made with lots of love. The other is one made of linen, stuffed with cotton. It's been patched up in several places over a long period of time. Uh, take the wool blanket. Oh, I shall let her pick first. Oh, it's okay. You take your chosen blanket and wrap it around yourself. She takes the other and sits on the armchair by the fireplace. Oh my god, she's so precious! <laughs> See what I mean, though, about the art style? It's so, like different and unique and like really cool looking. I really like it. You sat down on the broken sofa, feeling a lot warmer than you have been the whole day. As you settle near the fireplace, you feel a rough surface touching your arm. You now remember the painting that you took apart. You hold what remains of it in your arms, gently unfolding it. Oh. You feel a little bad, seeing her disappointed face. Sorry, I had to take this down to get the firewood, but the canvas is still intact. No, it's okay. The painting is already ruined anyway. Mm, we'll ask about it. Do you remember what was on the painting? Well, I think the old painting was... I think it was a forest filled with flowers. I think they were white. I feel a little bad about it. You wonder if there's anything you can do for her? Uh... Do I know how to do that? <laughs> I mean, hell yeah, I'll do that if I know how to do that. I mean, obviously, I guess if I have the option. Sure, offer to repair it. Say, do you still somewhat remember what the paintings were like? What if I were to try and redraw it? Redraw? Using an untouched kindling, you pull out a piece of coal from the burning fireplace. You roll it around the ground a little, waiting for it to cool down. With your gloved hand, you smashed the brittle coal into smaller pieces and took one of the pieces. All the while, the child watches with great interest. You drew a rectangle on the ground, marking the territories of your next masterpiece. So, why don't you describe what the painting was like? Well, it's a forest. A dark and scary forest, and its trees are barren. But on the ground, there are many flowers growing. Ah! Uh, don't color it in. The flowers were white. Oh, oh, all right, all right. And on the flowers, I think they were Mama's favorite flowers. Do you know what they're like? Um, white and kind of droopy. Mama said she named me after it. And what is your name? Oh, I, I don't remember. What? You don't remember your own name? Well, everyone calls me by different nicknames. It's been a while since someone called me by my name. I see. You awkwardly concentrate to draw the scene the child was describing, when you hear a giggle. <laughs> You're not very good at drawing, are you? <laughs> you laugh in embarrassment. <laughs> why, why, why would I offer to, <laughs> to... Why would I offer to redraw the painting if I wasn't good at painting <laughs> or I guess drawing heck well that's okay child grabs a piece of coal from the floor as well and draws alongside you I think there was a big tree on the left here it reminded me of the tree I used to hide in when me and my brother played hide and seek he never found me whenever I hide in there and then we both get scolded for being out too late Mm, this isn't turning out the way I imagined. She moves back to the armchair, looks at the scribbles on the floor. 
<laughs> well, I'm not good at drawing either, I guess. That was very fun, though. Indeed. Hmm. I kind of want to see that tree again. And play hide-and-seek. See that flower that Mama likes. But I'd have to leave this place, don't I? There are only little embers left in the fireplace. You see the young girl begin dozing off. Are you getting sleepy? You should sleep if so. Mm, not yet. I'd like to stay here a little longer. It's so warm here. Indeed, it was warm and comfortable. You find yourself getting tired as well. You know, for some reason I feel a little anxious, even when I'm tired and sleepy like this. What is it that you're anxious about? What do you think? What do you think she's anxious about? She's a young girl living alone in this old decrepit house in the woods after being abandoned by her parents? What wouldn't she be anxious about? <laughs> I guess just whether the storm will end tomorrow. Whether I want to stay or leave this place. I'm not sure where to go from here. There's nothing left here for me, really. They won't be angry if I left this place, right? <laughs> what am I even talking about? You watch as she curls up in the armchair and anxiously shuffles around. You think of the things you can do to calm her down. Ooh, um... Both are good options, I mean... Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, tell me... No... Yeah, tell, tell me your worries. It helps a lot to get that stuff off your chest. I mean, this is the first person she's seen in, like, who knows how long. So, you know... She ha hasn't had anyone to, like, talk to at all, let alone about her feelings. So, you know, might might help. <laughs> Maybe you'll feel better after letting it all out? What is it you're worried and anxious about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just anxious. I don't know what to do. Well, I think no matter what you decide to do, I'm sure things will turn out just fine. As the conversation died down, the two of you quietly watched as the embers fade. The sound of wind and the cracking of ember lulls you both to sleep. Hmm, okay, well that didn't really help. <laughs> you wake up in an unfamiliar place just as dawn breaks. You look around, but there seems to be no one else here. You decide to slowly gather your belongings. You double check that the fire has been fully ex extinguished. Once you finished packing, you neatly folded the blanket you were using and placed it on the sofa. You pick up your belongings and head outside. As you step outside, you see the child standing out in the snow. She seems entranced by the morning sun. You walk up to her. The sound of your boots in the snow alerts her of your presence. The storm ended. Yes, indeed. She looks back at the building behind you. Guess it's time for me to leave. You quietly reach out to her. And she takes your hand. Oh, okay. We got the normal ending. Also, apparently we learned her name at the end. <laughs> at the end there. Um. Huh, okay. Interesting. Should I try and go back and get a different ending? I think I want to see at least another one. See what's up with see what's up with her. Maybe we can do a little bit better job at uh, helping her. <laughs> okay, let's skip through here for a bit and see if we can get some more endings. Say, let's say this time I'm on my way home. To be honest, right now I'm just trying to get back home. I've been away for far too long, I think. I'm hoping to return as soon as possible. And yet you're also telling me to leave my own home? Ah, right. <laughs> that said, you're on your own right now. There's nobody left in this house, and I'm only passing by. You see, I personally believe that home is where all my loved ones are. No matter where I go, as long as we have each other, we're always at home. But... What happens if everyone you loved had left? Well, if we parted ways, then... Um... 
I'll find another place to call home. I don't think there's anything wrong with finding a new one. I see. Yeah. Two of you stayed silent for a few moments before you broke it. Okay. Same thing this time. Alright. On to the next choice. Uh, okay, well... Okay, oh yeah, let's, uh... Ask her if she wants to teach us to teach her a fire. To start a fire, you need a few things. The obvious thing you'll need is... Uh, wood. Yes, you'll need some dry firewood to keep the fire going. Another th thing you need is some tinder, which catches fire easily. These things can be anything, ranging from dried grass, paper, wool. The most important part is that the tinder is placed... I think under the logs. Placing the tinder under the logs will make it catch fire much more easily. It's because the heat and by extension fire moves upwards and outwards. Uh, to keep the fire going you'll need to keep feeding it with the burnable pieces or kindling. Finally, for safety reasons, you should uh, put out the fire... Um, yeah, like before leaving. Yeah. Ensure that the fire is truly dead and there are no embers remaining. Fires like this has a good chance to restart if left unattended. When putting it out, you should ensure there's no spoon, key, or embers left. There's a little lesson for you guys. <laughs> Bet you didn't think you were gonna learn some survival tips, did you? <laughs> it's complicated, huh? Might be easier to learn by doing, maybe. If you do decide to come along with me after this, I'd be happy to show you. As well as many other things. What do you think? Y yeah, alright. Oh, I'd almost forgotten. I'm not sure which blanket you wanted, so I bought a few. Yeah, let's let, uh, her pick. Why don't you pick one first? Aren't you cold as well? The storm is raging, even now. Ah, uh, well, I don't really feel that cold. It'll be okay, you can pick any. Hmm, okay. Pick this one, this time. Oh, sorry, I skipped some new stuff. Uh, she said... Uh, you examine the linen blanket, a uh, linen blanket closely, and notice the embroidery on it. They're varied in colors and shapes. It's a comfy little blanket with borders decorated with little white flowers. The young girl noticed that you were examining the blanket. Pretty, isn't it? Mama was good with sewing. She especially liked those flowers. It used to cover the ground in spring. We've always looked forward to seeing it again. I haven't seen it in a while, though. As you settle near the fireplace, you feel a rough surface touching your arm. Oh, and then the painting. Okay. Let's, um... Let's return the canvas to her this time. You return the canvas to her, which she handles gently. She stares at the pitiful piece of canvas and sighs. I miss them. But they won't come back. I don't know. I, I sort of want to stay in this house a little longer. And spend as much time as possible before everything is gone. Yeah. There are only embers left in the fireplace and you see the young girl begin dozing off. Okay. Hmm. For some reason, I feel- oh. Okay, right, she's feeling anxious. You won't be angry. What am I talking about? Uh, yeah, let's do breathing exercises this time. The talking about- talking things out didn't really seem to work last time. Take a deep breath. Whatever you choose to do after this, I'm sure things will turn out fine. For now, try to take a deep breath. Breathe in and out, slowly, and control your breathing. Don't let it control you. You count your breathing along with her. You feel yourself falling into a pattern and slowly slipping into a slumber. Okay. Look around, but there seems to be no one else here. Decide to slowly gather your belongings. And double check that the fire has been fully extinguished. Take one last cursory look at the house. There seems to be no one left in here. You leave the house, snow crunching under your boot. As you walk away from the crumbling house, you turn your back towards it once more. You spot her on the second floor of the home, peering at you from the window. The two of you stare at each other for a second, before she turns away. You slowly make your way down to the village. 
wondering what will become of that house. What will become of that child. Oh, no, I didn't like that ending. <laughs> that's a bad ending. That's not a normal ending, that's a bad ending. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. No, <laughs> that's upsetting. I don't want her to be over there alone. What can I do? What can I do differently? What can I do differently? <laughs> okay, maybe let's try one more time and see if we can get a slightly better ending than that. Um, hmm. Let's say we're not far from home this time. You awoke in a familiar darkness. The sound of the wind threatened to pull you back into slumber. Oh, wait. But the echoing sound of the door slamming shut surprises you. You got up from your resting spot and decided to follow the noise. I'm the girl this time! Whoa! You can no longer see what's painted on it. Don't think you can fix that. Or oh, pickle jars. Inside those safer spiderwebs and moss. Not too fond of pickles anyway. There used to be a living room. Not much that's inside. Aside from some broken chairs and a dead fireplace. Probably used to be warm in there. You can barely see anything outside the window. Just an endless snowfall and the roaring of the wind. Not much will survive the storm outside. Farther down the halls, you see someone slumping down by the door. Cold, exhausted. They have yet to notice you here. Hmm. Slowly approach the other person. They seem to notice you are approaching, but we're too weak to move. Are you okay? Aw, they're cute! <laughs> they're heckin' cute! Uh, sorry for intruding like this. Thought I could make it to the next village before the storm. Guess I was wrong. Would you mind if I stay here for a little while? You look at the storm outside and you think for a little bit. Alright. You probably wouldn't survive out there anyway. Just don't make a mess. They bow at you gratefully and watches and you, uh, you watch as they sort out their belongings. You cannot help but be curious of the person before you. Where did you come from? Well, the mountains, I guess. And, well, before the village, I was staying at the village southwest of here. I was only planning to stay until spring comes, though. Uh, I meant... No, never mind. Oh, I meant... No, never mind. This person seems a little dense. That's fine, you don't really care where he's from. After all, you will soon part ways. You scrutinize the intruder. He appeared to be a little cold. It's kinda chilly in here, huh? Aren't you cold? No, not really. <laughs> well, I'm a little cold. Do you have something that might help? You think of what you could offer him. Well, let's go get blankets. Would you like a blanket? There should be a few upstairs that I can lend you. He looks at you, hopefully. Ah, uh, yes, please, thank you. Quickly go upstairs and grab some blankets. There are two blankets in your room. First is an old, patched up linnet blanket filled with cotton. The other one is a thick knitted wood, a wool blanket. You decide to give him the... Linen blanket. Afraid that he'd unravel your woolen blanket, you decide to give him the linen one instead. It should be able to keep him warm. You return with the blanket to find the poor guy curled up on the sofa, trying to stay warm. You hand him the blanket, which he accepts graciously. <laughs> Thank you so much, and sorry for the trouble. You nod slightly. You watch him for a little bit, but he still seems to be struggling with the cold. It's probably unavoidable that you'd have to get a fire going. You decide to look for materials to build a fire in... Let's do the living room this time. Both times, last time we did, uh, the kitchen. Um. You notice the wreath hanging above the fireplace. It's relatively dry, and it's made of different sized sticks. This would be perfect to use as both tinder and kindling. I think that's the, um. 
the one that she made, right? You examine the picture frames. You feel a little bad using this as firewood. Take apart the painting and break the fame, flame and, uh, frame into pieces for kindling. Set aside the canvas, but then keep. Came back with several items that may be useful with starting a fire. Do you think you can make a fire with these? Uh, oh, yes, I think so. Takes a look at the item you've brought and looks at them doubtfully. This picture frame, is it really okay to use this? Take one la uh, last glance at the broken paintings. It's fine. It's not like we can fix it. I barely remember what's on them. You look away. Honestly, feels bad having to use the painting as fuel. There was not much else you could use. You also didn't want to deal with another possible dead body. Another? Haha. <laughs> uh, if you uh, just let the poor person freeze. Here and break apart the object. Wait, did her parent- wait. Did her parents actually die or something? Or her brother or something? Oh no. Uh, and watch as he goes through his inventory. He carries the items to the old, uh, destitute fireplace. You watch as he set, uh, sets up a small bonfire. He starts by setting up the tinder in the center of the fireplace, and then carefully placing the bigger sticks around and over it, like a tent. You never really had to make one before, and so you watch with great interest. He then takes out a small box. Inside lies a few sticks with a bright red edge. He strikes it against the box, and then the fire appeared, as if out of thin air. He's cute. <laughs> look, at, look at his hair! It looks so fluffy! Aww. He catches you watching intently. What is it? Oh, no. Sorry. I didn't realize that's how you build a fire. You've never built a fire like this? Never learned to. How did you stay warm before this? Well, it's not that cold for me. Wow, it's a literal blizzard outside and you're telling me you don't feel cold enough to light a fire? He shrugged. Well, you seem quite interested. Shall I teach you the basics? Yes, please. Well, you've watched me make a fire. Shall we review a little? Start a fire. Oh, we're getting our, we're getting our fire instructions again. You need wood, you need put it under the logs, and then uh, you do it before leaving. Uh huh, yep. It's complicated, huh? Might be easier to learn by doing, maybe. Two of you watch as the logs slowly catch fire, flames dancing on top of a mountain of wood. Which reminds you, you still have no idea why this person is walking around in the mountains in the winter. You decide to ask a few questions. You're not from around here, are you? Ah, indeed, I'm not. I'm only here until spring to observe some flowers that are near here. Are you studying the flowers? Indeed. So where did you come from? I'm from abroad, really. Just here to finish my studies. And it is technically the holidays, but it's been hard to return home right now. Which is why I'm trying to use this time to do other things instead. You can't return home? Yeah, traveling abroad has been kind of rough. I probably could go back home, but I'm unsure about being able to return here later. Is that something to be worried about? Isn't it, it better to be home, along with your family right now? Well, I do miss them, but this is a difficult opportunity to come by. They've been supportive of me, supportive of me coming here. I can't disappoint them by returning empty-handed. I see. That's rough. I guess there are perks to living alone. You really live in this place alone? Hmm. Don't you get lonely? This house is pretty big for one person. How'd you end up here anyway? What do you mean? I grew up here. He looks at you confused. Y you used to have more people here though. But it's only me now. Well, considering the state of this place, why don't you leave as well? You think to yourself for a little while. What is it that binds you to this place? This place was home. Where else would I go? This is pla This is the place I've called home for so long. I know it doesn't look like it, but it used to be warm and welcoming. Hmm, that's fair enough, I guess. 
I sort of re relate to that, except I'm un unable to go home and all. But still, this place is quite literally falling apart. It's not safe here, is it? Wouldn't it be better to move? It's not like you can't return here. And perhaps maybe get someone to help fix up this place? I don't know. You consider it for a moment. It won't be the same, though. This place is no longer the place you knew and loved before either, right? You sighed. You knew he had a point. But it was hard to accept that this place is already ruined. Turn your eyes to the fireplace. The flame slowly consuming the timber beneath. Hey. Why don't you try to come with me- Oh. Hey, why don't you try uh, to come with me to the village when the storm ends? Maybe we'll find someone who can fix the roof too. At least it would be a little more livable and comfortable then. What do you think? That's fair. Yeah, that's a good point. Might be nice to leave this place once in a while. I wonder though, have you ever thought of leaving this place? I have, not gonna lie. Especially since there's not much left here. It's easier said than done, I guess. Fair enough. Oh, by the way, here. He hands you a rolled up canvas. Seems to be the painting that you took down before. I thought you might want to keep it. Oh, thank you. If I may ask, what was in the painting? If you remember, that is. Oh, it was a portrait of me and my loved ones. Now I barely remember what it was like then. Mostly how warm it was. I think we used to celebrate the winter solstice. We'd make wreaths and sit around the fire and tell stories. And then when the spring equinox came, we'd celebrate again. We'd go out and admire the newly bloomed flowers. The forest would be covered in these delicate and droopy white flowers. When was the last time I did that? Hmm? Droopy white flowers? Could you talk about could you be talking about snowdrops? Is that what it's called? He laughs. Oh, what fate. That's the flower I've been looking around for. Huh. How strange. But why are you looking for it? Well, they've been on the decline late recently. People taking away the bulbs and selling for commercial use. Oh, that's unfortunate. No wonder I haven't seen them around during the last few years. I sort of wish to see them again. Well, if it makes you feel better, quite a few of them are still around. Go with him to find the flowers! <laughs> oh my goodness! Sorry, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I haven't said anything, but like I'm kind of enveloped in this. I love that we're seeing it from like her point of view now. If you decide to join me when winter ends, we could go see them perhaps. Say, I've been wondering though, don't you get lonely living out here? Maybe it's because I'm used to being around people, but I can't imagine living out here alone in this desolate house. Even if I get lonely traveling here alone. You think about it for a little bit. Is it lonely out here alone? It does get lonely. But leaving is so difficult. How so? Can't you just leave? Sorry, that came out rather insensitive, didn't it? I still can't help but be a little worried. This place doesn't protect you from the elements, doesn't keep you warm, barely serves you anymore. I don't really understand why you'd want to stay. It's not as if you couldn't bring the things you love with you. And it seems like none of your loved ones are here. Could you really call this place a home, then? You're right. No one I care about lives here anymore. There's really nothing keeping me here. At least, nothing I can't just bring along. But I don't know where to go if not here. What would you do if the people you care about aren't around anymore? Well... If it were me, I don't think I'd ever lack things to care about. I'd find someone or something else to care about. There are plenty of things out there I can come to love. I think I can always find a new place to call home. You mull over his words for a little and frowned. Uh, you still have a home to return to. Well, it wasn't always like this, even for me. I was pretty much kicked out of home once. That's been pretty rough, and I'm glad I found another place I can call home. I'd argue that a home is anywhere with things and people I care about. For me, it'll be wherever my lover is. And it'll be wherever our little puppers are. 
Oh, I wonder if that applies to you as well. Well, things here are things I care about. They don't make you seem very happy, though. I guess not. Adopt her! <laughs> Take her home with you! You have a daughter now! <laughs> you have a daughter now! <laughs> You're a dad now! <laughs> Well, there's nothing stopping you from making this a comfy little home, though. If you fix up the place and make it suit your liking. If you fill it with things that makes you happy, regardless of the slow place's history, it might just work out. If you found nothing in this place makes you happy, there's nothing wrong with finding a different place to call home. Say, what's your favorite color? Your favorite animal? What's something you want to see? There's plenty of things you can do to make this place feel a little more comfy. Regardless, your home doesn't have to be the same place as the one in your memories to make you happy. You did mention wanting to see the snowdrops, didn't you? If we can get a permit to grow them, you can plant them and see them easily from your windows. Wouldn't that be nice? I suppose I've been too caught up in my nostalgia. I've been afraid to make changes to this place. I guess I was afraid of moving things that were precious to someone else. I'm afraid of losing what I had before. Not that they're still around. I guess I'm afraid of letting things go. But thinking about it, I don't even know why I've decided to stay here. I don't think there are many things left in here that can make me happy. I... I want to find a new home. I think I want to leave this place as is, just as I remembered. But you're right. I should still seek out the things that make me happy. Find myself a new place I can call home. It makes me wonder, what's out there waiting for me? Whatever it is you find out there, I hope it brings you joy. Talking about this makes you feel strangely calm. Can't help but yawn. It's too warm and cozy to feel otherwise. I wonder if you'll be alright, dealing with the cold once this fire's died out. It would be hard to adjust to the biting cold once you felt warmth again. Guess there are plenty of things I'll need to do when the storm ends. It's going to be quite busy, huh? Yes, but I'm also looking forward to it, I guess. I hope the storm ends soon. I hope I'll be able to sort everything out soon. And then, when winter ends, I can go see the snowdrops bloom. Yeah, I would love to see that as well. Watch as the fire dies off into embers, find yourself dozing off. The sound of the wind and the crackling logs lulling you to sleep. You awaken to a familiar blanket draped over you. You look around to find yourself alone in the living room. The warm sunlit sunlight hits your skin as the dawn breaks over the horizon. You get up from the armchair, stretching as you stand. The folded blanket that was draped over you spot him through the window, crouching in the snow some distance away from the house. Feeling determined to approach him, he does not seem to notice. Hello. Ah! <laughs> that surprised me. So, have you decided to come along? Yes. Regardless, I'll need to head to the village. Guess I'll figure out what to do from there. But what are you doing? Oh, uh, looking for some snowdrop bulbs. I see. I did find a few a little further in, but quite a number of them are damaged from the storm. That's unfortunate. Yeah, but the remaining ones, I'm sure they'll do just fine once this winter ends. Yeah, I hope so. Anyway, enough of my ramblings. Shall we head off now? Of course. He offers his hand, and you take it. You descend the mountains, both afraid and excited for what comes next. Yay! Oh, I don't know what ending that was, but... Oh, that was really nice, actually! That was really sweet! Oh, okay! I didn't realize you could play as both of the characters. That makes things so different. Um... <laughs> okay, I actually really kind of liked that. I mean, there were some things, like some spelling errors and just little things, but overall, I actually really liked that. It was a nice little 
commentary on nostalgia and moving on and, you know, that sort of stuff. It was really nice and sweet and sentimental and I really appreciated that. Also, again, like I said, the art style was really nice. The music was really relaxing. Vibes were good. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, I don't know how many more endings are, like, here, but... Uh, the game will be linked down below if you would like to play play this yourself and see what other outcomes you can get. Um, that was really interesting. Also, sorry for not talking very much at the end, especially at the end, but sort of through the whole thing. I got really kind of enveloped in that story, <laughs> um, but I hope that you didn't mind and just liked listening to me read. Um, if not, you're probably not watching this. Anyway, so whatever. <laughs> but um, that's all for when winter ends. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.